Thank you, Madam President, and, uh, and I'm going to be brief. Um, there, are, there are a lot of reasons why uh, I could oppose this bill, and I think we've touched on just about every one of them here tonight, uh, either through an amendment or some other form of discussion. But there's one issue uh, that's not uh, addressed in the bill that I want to talk about for just a few minutes, because it's important to a constituent of mine. Senate File 126 was a bill that I had authored and, and uh, dropped in earlier in the session. Uh, it's a fairly simple bill in, in respect that it's basically two sentences, yet it's an incredibly complex and passionate issue. And it deals with seat belts and school buses. And I know many of you that have been around here for a while have, have probably debated this in the past or at least talked about it, um, perhaps have considered it uh, from one side or the other. Um, and I, I originally had thought about proposing this as an amendment tonight, but I realized that it's not, uh, it's not an appropriate subject that we just take up here on the fly uh, and vote up or down. And I wanna make sure that it gets more attention than that because I think it's worthy. If you would have asked me 12 months ago if I would have supported seatbelts uh, and school buses, I would have said no. And the reason why is that because I believe in the construction of buses and I believe in all the past practice uh, that, we're, that we're all familiar with about how kids are compartmentalized into these school buses and they are inherently safe in their, in their passage from home to school and back again. Uh, but things are changing. And, uh, and I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute. And you're gonna get a couple of handouts that should be showing up on your desks. But I want to introduce you uh, to a constituent of mine, and sometimes we bring issues forward that are 100% constituent driven, uh, and, this, and this perhaps is one example. Uh, and I'd introduce you to a friend of mine, his name is Hunter. When Hunter was in kindergarten, he had an incident on a school bus where he ended up with several stitches in his head. Um, he recovered from that and, and went on uh, a number of years uh, forward and uh, was in a situation last year uh, where he was discussing with uh, some other kids his age. He's in third grade now, um, so he's much older. Uh, but they were having a discussion about why is it that our school buses don't have seat belts. And they had a really robust discussion, and they came to the conclusion that everything that they do from the time that they were born and came home from the hospital where they're strapped into a car seat, and they grew up and they moved into uh, a toddler seat. And, and now, you know, as they grow older, they'll be, every time they get in the car with mom or dad or whoever, uh, they're put into a seat belt. Every time that they're moving, essentially, on a road, they're strapped into a vehicle, with the exception of the school bus, and they wanted to know why. So last fall, I get this letter uh, from Ms. Glomsky's third grade class at Laura MacArthur Elementary School signed by all the third graders. And I won't read it to you uh, because we don't want to spend a lot of time here, but I encourage you if you're ever walking down the hallway to stop by my office because I've got the letter framed on the wall. Um, and I'll just, and I will read to you the PS of the letter because I think it's interesting. And it says, PS, we listened to the I'm Just a Bill song on YouTube. You should check it out. We love it and I bet you'll love it too. And they go on to talk about seat belts and why they think it's important and they have an idea for a bill. So I read the letter and I, and I was intrigued, so I did a little bit of research and here's what I wanna point out to you members. The two pieces of paper that should be on your desk by now, I think are important. Uh, the first one is from February of 2016 and this was, uh, it's we're talking about the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Uh, reversed its long-standing policy and is now recommending that students wear lap and shoulder belts on all school buses. Now, to be fair, uh, the organization stopped short of proposing a mandate. However, you should know that there are several state legislatures that are considering similar legislation. The other piece that should be on your desk is, uh, is a reference to the National Safety Council who is now calling for uniform child passenger safety practices across multiple modes of transportation, including school buses. And I'm not gonna go any deeper than that. There is a lot of research members uh, from the past and, and more recently, like I've just referenced here. And my hope is that 
Um, Senator Newman, I'm not going to ask you to yield, and I'm just going to ask you uh, to consider as we go forward and we come back from break, if it, perhaps you could find time in your committee to give us an informational hearing. Uh, because I think this is an important issue. I think it's incredibly complicated. Um, and I'd like to get it before your committee uh, for at least an informational hearing so that we can have a public discussion, have some public testimony. Um, like I said, uh, Madam President, I, I offered this bill early in the session. I was not able to secure a hearing, uh, but it's an important issue to me. I know it's important to my constituents. It's important to Hunter, and I hope that as we move forward, uh, Senator Newman, that you at least consider the opportunity for an informational hearing. Thank you.